and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have got a very interesting puzzle indeed, in the form of Dice Doku by Xenonetics. I think this is uh, Xenonetics' is debut on the channel. We've had loads of debuts this week, and with some absolutely stupendous puzzles. Um, and this one is meant to be approachable as well, so if you struggled with some of the puzzles that we've shown this week, then this is the one to cut your teeth on, because apparently it is doable. And it's got a beautiful rule about dice nets, um, which if I can find an animation on the internet, I'll, 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 try and, I'll try and put something on the screen now so that you can see what a dice net is, if you're not sure. Um, I'll read you the rules of this one in just a second. I have got a few things to mention first. Um, I've got, I've got some, I've got to wish people a happy birthday. Mac, happy 26th birthday, my friend. Um, I hope you and Francesca have a super day. Um, I also want to say happy anniversary, happy relationship anniversary to Patrick and to Laura. Um, Patrick, I know you very well. I think you watch all our videos, which makes us very glad that you exist. Um, and we hope you have a super time today. Uh, with Laura, um, uh, also, actually, we received an email today with some much more somber news. Um, I think I'll, I will just read out the email because I, I think um, I think it's appropriate. So it says, "Hello, Simon and Mark. Uh, Yuval, a close friend of mine and one of your patrons, died tonight. Uh, I want to share how important CTC has become for us in the last year. Um, Yuval has been struggling with cancer for a long time, and because of the cancer's location, his ability to walk, talk, hear, and see slowly deteriorated." You can imagine that there wasn't a lot he could do, but up until three weeks ago, he would still watch your videos every day. And up to one week ago, when he became completely bedridden, we solved the daily gas puzzles and compared times and notes each morning. I honestly have no idea what else could have taken his mind off his situation like your channel and the daily gas did. Um, I would love it if you could shout out Philip Newman, Clover, and Sam Kapperman lines for their amazing work on the Daily Gas. I truly believe it made the end so much more bearable. Uh, and that's from Yuval's friend Levav. Um, and I mean, I, there's not a lot I can add to that. Um, Philip, Clover and Sam, if you've not tried the Daily Gas puzzles, you really must. They're over on our Discord server. They get so much deserved attention because they're genuinely approachable. They're always witty and fun. And um, yeah, Philip, Clover and Sam, you've obviously had an effect uh, on somebody at the end of their life, and it is a humbling thing indeed. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you don't mind. Um, on less uh, sobering or somber matters, um, Patreon. We have got a whole load of stuff coming up uh, in, the, in the coming days. Um, I'm very grateful, actually, to all of the constructors um, for last month's Patreon reward, which was the lockout line, line Sudoku hunt, where we're going to now be able to release a video for every single one of those puzzles, which is quite incredible. I think there were 16 puzzles in that hunt, all of which sort of standard difficulty for a Cracking the Cryptic episode, some of them really monstrously hard as well. And um, Toolcat and Rift Clown and the others have worked really hard to create a whole suite of videos uh, for our patrons. So thanks very much to them. And if you were struggling now on any of those puzzles, there is a full video on every one of them available right now. Um, now, tomorrow is exciting because tomorrow is the 1st of November. And that's not why it's exciting, really, but it's exciting because uh, that means it's uh, the monthly reward for November that gets published. So at 4 p.m. tomorrow, there will be the Japanese Sum Sudoku. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a school stroke degree course, 45 puzzles, um, 45 puzzles of this. Oh, no, that's today's crossword. Don't look at that. Uh, this one. Um, so you can see this is a paint by numbers institute. Uh, and basically, um, you know, you get to you're going to solve puzzles like this. And the thing that's beautiful about Japanese Sun Sudoku is, of course, that you get a picture if you solve it correctly. So actually what I should probably do for tomorrow is to find a Japanese sum Sudoku puzzle and do it on the channel so that people people can can see why these puzzles are are beautiful and brilliant. I am a big fan. Um, and as I say, oh, 
sorry <laughs> that's the crossword again um so yeah that, that, that's that's coming tomorrow at four and we'll probably give a bubba is you key to the first entry we get and also a bubba is you key to the uh somebody we pick out of the hat so if you do manage to solve all of the and get your degree then send us the answer you get at the end um so that's that also many of you have been asking about this incredible puzzle two truths and a lie by zeta math um which i have recorded a solve of and I was due to put it on Patreon, and I am going to put it on Patreon tomorrow. Um, so if you're a patron of the channel, you've been wanting to see how to solve this incredible Sudoku, then you'll be able to see that tomorrow. If you have not tried this puzzle, you must, and you can right now, just go to the link under the video and play the puzzle. Yes, the rule set is prodigious, but it's all standard stuff. It's, it's just, a, you know, basically every single standard variant of Sudoku has been incorporated into this puzzle. Um, so the rules are, you know, they're tricky for a newcomer, but they are worth learning and this puzzle is worth your time, I promise you. Um, and we also are going to put that video um, on the channel in the coming days as well. So it will go out to our patrons first and then it will go onto the channel as well in due course. That does seem to be something people have requested. Um, other than that, Obra Din tomorrow night, 10 o'clock UK time. We'd love to have your company. I, I hope not many of you have been caught out by the time change today um, because the clocks went back overnight in the UK. Um, now, with all that said and done, I should get on with some solving, shouldn't I? So let's look at Dice Doku by Xenonetics. I hope it's not Xenonetics. I think it's Xenonetics. Um, and I'll read the rules. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Every cage must fold into a legitimate dice where opposing faces sum to seven. So we're probably going to have to remember that. So if you've never never studied a dice, I'm sure most people who watch Cracking the Cryptic are only for, too familiar with the qualities of a standard dice or die. Um, basically, opposing sides, they always sum to seven. Uh, cells with a grey circle contain an odd digit. That's normal. Cells separated by a white dot contain consecutive digits. So that's normal as well. Not all possible dots are given. So that's what we've got to go on. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking now. Let's get cracking. So I can see, I oh, see, so we've got like loads of 21 cages because of course there are six sides. And the things you learn on Cracking the Cryptic, there are six sides on a dice. If, though, if the opposite sides always sum to seven, three sevens are 21. You could get that a different way by thinking about the triangular number for six, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. But it's, it's sort of, <laughs> I don't know, I find it more elegant to think about the three sevens for some reason when we're studying dice nets. Um, so, so all of these dice nets are a set of the digits one to six, aren't they? Ah, no, all the ones in column three are all in... Ah, yeah, okay, look. These are odd digits, and they're all in a dice net. So we've only got three odd digits to choose from for those digits. They must be one, three, and five. Ah, I was about to say that's the same for column seven, but it's not, look. That little one there is rather annoyingly not in a dice net. So those two are one, three, or five, but that one is not... So that, hmm, okay. So these are odd digits. Obviously, in order to make a sum of seven, these odd digits have to be accompanied by an even digit on the opposite side of their dice. Or die, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna annoy myself by getting that wrong. Um, but, okay, right, well this one, the opposite one is gonna be that one, isn't it? And this is gonna be slightly hard to explain, but basically, yeah, you can hopefully you can imagine as you fold along the edges of this, this, this and this, you're going to create a sort of, um, I don't know, a string, a rotation thing that's going to need a top and a bottom. Now, the top and the bottom are going to have to be those squares. So that square there is even and it adds up to seven with that one. The, and this, well, this is the same dice net. Look, it's just rotated. So that one's going to be the same for this one. Now that one is not the same. Right, so this one, this one goes with that one. And hopefully you can see that as well. If you imagine if you were going to fold these three cell or these three yeah, cells down, you would none of those would be on the opposite side. This one, as you fold it, is going to share this edge. 
with this cell. So that's clearly not on the opposite side either. So that one's the only one that can be. Um, hopefully that's visualizable. Um, but so this one is going to be on the opposite side to that one. And now let's keep going with this then. So this one's opposite side. Well, this one's interesting. This one's opposite side must be that one, mustn't it? Because we're just going to fold, we fold along that edge and then that edge, that's going to be underneath that one. So that one's got to be a two, four or a six. Um, and then this one here must be that one there. So there we go. We've, we've done them all. Well, actually we haven't done them all. We haven't done this one down here. This sort of elongated T pentomino. A, uh, what's it going to be? A hexomino, I suppose. Um, hmm. Okay. So perhaps what we have to do here is to try and keep track of the different variants of seven that we've got. Because, the, because these three digits are different, these three digits are different. That one, that one, and that one are all different. Um... I quite like that idea. I'm going to colour them. I know I never need much excuse to colour, but um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's make those, I don't know, green. And then these can be, um, what should we make those? Blue. Okay. So now, that string of digits there is like a blue-green string of digits, isn't it? Because it's everything that's not purple. Uh, and that means in this column, we still need two purples, which are going to have to be in those squares. Right, I, I like this, actually, because, of course, now what we can do is we can ask the question, where where is the opposite side of this purple on this dice? And it's going to be that square. So those two squares are the same, and those two must be blue. That's rather elegant, isn't it? Um, now, that square... Is now forced to be green because it's not purple and it's not blue and that square <laughs> must have an opposite square Ooh, that's horrible okay so let's work this out so that's going to flip down there that's going to go on yes the opposite side of this one is that one whoa that's getting more difficult isn't it so those two are the same um okay what does that mean the answer is i don't know um okay <laughs> let me just think about this for a second or two uh ah got something right that one is a two four or a six it sees green and it sees blue so that must be purple which means that, that must be purple which means these two are blue i like this now that must be a one three or a five and that must be a two, four, or a six, because of course this one is blue, but it's not the even digit that's blue. So we're probably gonna end up labeling all of these digits with their appropriate values. Now, can we keep this going? That must be a one, three, or a five. That must be a two, four, or a six. So that must be a one, three, or a five. So now, okay, oh no, I was about to ask where 1305, where purple 1305 went in this net, but of course it goes there because I've already put it in. Um, but the, what about green 246? That's got to go here. Okay, so that becomes a green 246. Now the opposite side of the net to this one is that one, so that must be a green 135. That means that's a 246, which means that's a 135. Um, feel like I must be able to disambiguate some of this now. This square is purple. That's good. And that's a 246 purple. 2, 3, 4, 5. We've still, I'm, what I think we're, we're aiming for here is sort of the holy grail in each case, which is six colours in a row, column or box. Um, you can see, I think we've only achieved that so far in column 2. But that square, oh no, that square is either... Oh, it's the opposite of that one. So that's either blue or green. Ah, this square. Ah, yeah, okay. Look, I've got a green and a purple, 135. 
So that must be a blue 135, which means that's a blue 246. Now there are two blues in row four, so that can't possibly be blue anymore. Once this is green, not only is it 135, but its friend on the other side of it of this this um, this dice here is that square. So that's got to be uh, 246. These two are now have become blue, and they are. And we know we know the order. That's 135. That's 246. Uh, there's two blues over here, so that must be green, which means that's green because that's the opposite side of the dice. Those two are purple. We now know exactly, well, we know which is the evens and which is the odds in each of these cases. I hope this actually does something, by the way, um, all of this hard work that we're doing. Um, okay, so there's, ah, okay, so that's become blue we can see because we've had we've used up our greens and our purples now do we know well what we do know is if that's blue what's the other side of the dice that's blue and that one is a 135 because it's not the even blue so this one is the even blue um that's a high digit but i don't think i can color it look you can see the one, three, and the five have all gone. Oh, that's a seven or a nine because it's odd, but it's not one, three, or five. So, ooh, I wanted to suddenly go with a purple one, three, five there, but I think that's just utter nonsense. So we're not doing that. Um, okay, so what do we do next? You can see the green. 246 has to be in one of those squares and that's interesting because these two squares if we think about a net those must be opposite sides so that means that the fact that one of these is green means the other one is green as well so I can't disambiguate them but I do know they're green that means I know those are purple ah now where does 135 purple go in this box it goes exactly there so that's a 135 and that's on a white dot oh that's beautiful oh yeah 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 okay now we've got somewhere now we're cooking with gas because what is this digit the answer is it's got well because it's consecutive with a one three or a five it is a one two three four five or six in fact it's an even digit so it's actually a two four or a six because it's consecutive with an odd digit but but in this box the only color that's on that we haven't used yet is a purple even so this is a purple even digit because it's a digit one to six it must be colored now we know these is a double purple that are consecutive that, that add up to seven so they must be four and three and now we know that we know that the purple even is a four so every time we see a two four or six in purple we can just fill in four um did i know that was a two four or six or could that one have been a two four or six oh no that was even wasn't it yeah because of the one three five so i did know that that's fine so this is a three that's a three, 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 that's a three. Now that's a three by Sudoku. Maybe we can do Sudoku now. Four. Four. How many fours have we done? All of them. How many threes have we done? No, not all of them. That's a three. Okay, so all the threes we've now done, all the fours we've now done. These three digits are all high digits. I'll use black for high digits. I did that the other day and I quite liked it. Um, that's a high digit, of course. The seven or the nine must be a high digit. Oh, I see. So I can keep going with Sudoku of all things. Fancy doing Sudoku in a Sudoku puzzle. One, three, and five. Where does it go in here? It's got to go there. The blue one, three, or five, I should say. So now we've done... Yeah, so now I get three black digits to complete box four. That square now has to be coloured because there are the three black digits, which are the digits seven, eight, and nine, are completed in row five. So this digit has got to be green even. Um, so it's two, four, six, and it's green. Therefore, those three digits are... 
high digits. Now we can see those two digits have to be colored and one of them is an even green and one of them is an even, ah, one of them's an even blue and that's an even blue. So that must be the even blue in column seven and that must be the even green. Not the Eva Green, the Even Green. <laughs> I mean, it would be lovely if Eva Green did make an appearance in my Sudoku, but uh, she hasn't yet. Um, right, where does 246 go here? That's got to be 24 or 6, so that's got to be 1, 3 or 5, because I'm just asking where green goes in this box, the green 246. Now, now those have both got to be high digits. Can we keep this going? The answer is maybe, I don't know. That's got to be a green 135. I think, yeah, from a Sudoku perspective, it's still going quite nicely, isn't it? That's now a black digit. In fact, yes, we have six colored digits along row three. So the rest of that is all black digits. Um, are there any more places? Yes, six in column, in that column. So those become black as well. Now, what else can we do here? 135, green 135 in box nine can only go exactly there. So now we still need blue even. Yeah, where does blue even go in row seven? It goes there. Let's give that the, the blue, which means those two squares have become, um, that's, that's, those two squares become black. This is black as well, just from the column five logic. So that is, so that's got to have an eight in it because this is consecutive sequence. So it's either seven, eight or eight, nine. So there's definitely an eight in there. So that's become a seven or a nine. Um, okay. Now, can we, what are we missing from this box then? We're missing the, uh, the odd blue. Ah, and we don't know which one it is. So we've still got to do some thinking about that. Ah, maybe we can get it from here though. That's a 135 and that is blue. So that does plonk the 135 blue in the corner. Hopefully it'll lead to a three in the corner. Somebody asked why, why, why I got excited when there was a three in the corner. Well, of course it's, I absolutely love REM. And that's three in the corner. It sounds a bit like that's me in the corner. Um, so there we go. That's why. Now, okay, so we're getting a bit further. What, what else have we got to do? We've got to put blue two, four or six into box eight. That square therefore is the final black cell. That This needs a color, it must be green. And it's you can see it's the odd green, which means that square is the final dark square. Now, ah, no, it's not. We haven't done this one. Oh, that's a dark square as well. Oh, I see. <laughs> but that's a very nice square to finish my colouring on because look, it's connected to a to a, a coloured digit, and these have to be consecutive. So this can't be eight or nine because they wouldn't be consecutive with even the highest digit here. This means that the green even digit is six. So we can go to all of the two four sixes in the grid. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work actually. Let's try and do that like that. No, it's not working. Okay, I've got to do it. I've got to do it the slow way. So six, 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 which means that the opposite digit, uh, the odd digit on the green must be a one in order to add them up to seven. So all of these become ones. Now we know by the process of elimination that the blues are a two, five pair. So every even blue digit has got to be a two. 2, 2, and 2. Every odd blue has now become 5. 5, 5. And now we've just got to do the 7s, 8s, and 9s. And we can start here because that's, ah, I see, I see what's going on. So this is consecutive with the 6, must be the 7. That's the 9. That's the 8. That's a 9. That's a 9. That's a 7, 8 pair. 7, 8, 7, 8. Um, that's, oh, I see. That's 8. That's 7. That's 9. That's 9. So this is a seven, eight pair, which places nine in row four. Seven, eight, seven, eight. Okay, it's still not quite giving up its secrets, is it? That's a seven. Uh, this is an eight, nine pair. Okay, ah, that's a seven or an eight, which 
uh, because it sees the 9 in the row, which means the 9 must go up there, the 9 must go here, that gets us into the 9s and 8s again, look. I see, it's, it's, it is still going, we're still going, which is good. Now we just need 7s and 8s, and is that it? Yes, isn't that beautiful? That was real. This is the sort of puzzle that I absolutely like, sh love showcasing on the, on the channel because it is. It's not that hard to be honest. I mean, that would be a perfectly acceptable puzzle in my opinion in the World Sudoku Championship, for example, which isn't. It's not somewhere you tend to see monstrously hard puzzles. You just seem to see, you tend to see very good handmade puzzles, and this has a lovely, lovely idea behind it, which is these dice net. Nets, die nets, dice nets. Uh, so these dice nets are like a little theme that's been incorporated so elegantly into the puzzle that it doesn't matter that it's not hard. It's still incredibly satisfying and interesting to solve. So very well done, Zenonetics. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a go. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.